Good morning. My name is Jeff Jerka, and I will be reading the lessons this morning. Our first lesson is from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. If you picked up a Bible as you entered today, you'll find this lesson on page 1137. If you don't happen to have a Bible of your own, uh, you're welcome to keep uh, the St. Luke Bible as our gift to you. James chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Our second lesson is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 8. This can be found on page 904. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This is the word of our Lord. I invite you to get out the sermon outline as we start this teaching series. I know some of you are going to be talking about this in life group this week, and it might be helpful for you to have a few notes to remember. So, am I being Captain Obvious here when I say that having good relationships is important to us all? I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? They're so vital to us. They, they, it's such a big part of our lives that we want to have relationships that are mutual, that are true companionship, that, that are long and vital in our lives, right? That's what we want most of all in these relationships. Some time ago, I was preaching a wedding sermon, and when I preach a wedding sermon... I usually ask God, what's the one word or phrase for this couple? Because that's about all they're going to remember that day anyway, right? And, and people know that. And so they kind of come like, okay, what's the word or what's the phrase that God has for us this week? And so I was preaching this wedding sermon a, a while back, and here's the couple standing right in front of me, and they knew that this was how it works. And so they're kind of leaning in, right? Like, what's our word? What's the word? And so I began this way. I said, here's your word. Do whatever you want. And I remember the bride's eyes got like big as saucers. Like, I see it her face like, what are you saying, Pastor Steve? <laughs> Do whatever you want. Most. Most. You see, because a lot of times in relationships, we think we want something like, I'm going to prove her wrong and I'm right. I'm gonna, I, I would like him to kind of experience my pain here a little bit that he's caused. I'm not going to be totally transparent. I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to maybe let them know this thing in my life that's going on. We think that's, that's what we want. And, and I'm not saying we don't. But it's not what we want most. A lot of times we act in what we think we want. Like, okay, I'm giving him the silent treatment. Has that ever worked? Right? Has it ever worked one time to give someone dear to you the silent treatment? Never. 
And yet we think that's what we want because it'll get what we want, and it doesn't, and it's not what we want most. Because what we want most in our relationships is mutuality, companionship, trust, security, deep and abiding love, right? That's what we want most. And yet so oftentimes we behave in a way that doesn't get, help us get what we want most. In this series, we're going to discover God's way in our relationships, discover what God wants most for us in relationships, which is really what we want most in relationships if we really think about it. So why? Why should we turn to God to understand what we, to how to experience most, what we want most in relationships. Well, the reason is, is because God is defined as a relationship. 1,600 years ago, the church father Augustine said, this is how we understand God. He said one word, relationship. It's a relationship between the three persons of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God has existed in relationship forever. It's all God has ever been is a relationship between the three persons of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Forever, God has been figuring out how to experience what he wants most in relationship because that's his definition. We could actually, just to kind of push it a little bit, we could pray instead of the Lord's, in the Lord's Prayer, we could say, our relationship who art in heaven. Because that's God. God's name for us, as fathers of Jesus, God's name is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. His very name is a relationship. He created us to be in relationship in his image. His first assessment of us when he looked at us, said, hey, it's not good for you guys to be alone. That's not the way you're wired. God understands what it takes to experience what we want most in relationships, so we're going to turn to him. And there's a lot of places in the Bible to find God's way when it comes to relationships. In fact, if you're seeking to understand the Bible more, if you're with us today and trying to figure out what this following Jesus is all about and who these Christians are and, oh, they got this book called the Bible, what's that about? Here's a simple way to understand the Bible. The Bible is primarily about relationships. A relationship to God our relationship to each other and the world around us. That's primarily what the Bible's about. And so while there are many, many verses that we could turn to in this series to, figure, to see what God's way is, we're going to turn to a few, and specifically one, that's going to be our outline for the whole series. James chapter 3, verse 17. James is written by the brother of Jesus. Jesus was his older brother. Do you think that James, the younger brother of Jesus, would have a good understanding as to how Jesus viewed relationships? He'd been in a relationship with his older brother his whole life. So let's work our way into James 3.17 by looking at a few verses that lead up to it. Here's verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life. Now, one of the translations translate that phrase, living a life of steady goodness. I like that phrase, and I'm going to use it today a lot. The life of steady goodness. By deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. When we see wisdom in this passage, except for one instance, which I'll point out in a minute, just understand that's God's way. It's another way of saying God's way. God's way in relationships. And what I'd like you to do right now is begin thinking about what it means. What does it look like to live a life of steady goodness in our relationships? I'm going to ask you to share your answers to that question in a few minutes. So start thinking about it because we're going to want some of you at least to speak up or it's going to be really awkward. Okay? What does it mean to live a life of steady goodness? What does it look like to live a life of steady goodness 
in our relationships. Well, then James then shows the contrast between a life of steady goodness and not. He says, but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny its truth. Here is how we get off track. We think what we want is something different than what we want most. And we could characterize that in a lot of words, but it's, we could say, envy and selfish ambition. In our relationships, we think that the way to get what we want is to behave a certain way, and it's not. Selfish ambition, being out for ourselves, envy, if we behave that way, if we act in that, even though that's what we think we want, it's not going to help us experience what we want most in relationships. Then James uses a little sarcasm. He says, such wisdom. Now, the translator here, the editor here, put it in quotation marks, and that was, that's an appropriate thing to do because it's the same word that he used just a verse ago to talk about God's way, God's wisdom, but here he's using it sarcastically, right? Such wisdom, that is, envy and selfish ambition. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it is earthly, unspiritual. And then he just says, let me just say what it is. It's demonic. It's demonic. That's how bad it gets when we try to behave in ways that won't get us what we want most. So then James concludes his lead up to verse 14 by describing results of envy and selfish ambition. He says, next verse. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you'll find disorder in every evil practice. There's the, this makes me crazy part, right? Disorder. When we experience envy and selfish ambition, those other things that we think we want in relationships that are demonic, it makes us crazy. It's disorder. There's all manner of evil, right? Lying, cheating, not following through on commitments, being deceptive, behaving in a way that will hurt the other knowingly, violence or silence, they often call it. It makes us crazy. And we participate in it, which is really crazy, right? So having given this uh, compelling introduction, James, the brother of Jesus, then gives God's way to experience what we want most in relationships. He says, but the wisdom that comes down from heaven, so another way of saying that God's way is first of all pure. I want you to notice that little semicolon there. First of all, pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. We're going to use this as the outline for this series. We're going to each week look at one of those characteristics of God's way. But here's what I want you to understand right now, dear ones. This is God's way of loving us. This is how God first loved us. These, this is God's way because that's who God is in relationship. Again, God has existed forever in relationship. He knows what it takes more than any other living creature to understand. I should say he's a creator, not a creature. Living creator. He knows what it takes to have these kind of relationships that we most desire. Because this is how he behaves, behaves with us. This is how he treats us. The love of God in Christ Jesus, God's love for us in Christ Jesus, is the basis for all that's good in our life. And we love others as a response to the way God has first loved us. This is not a checklist. Don't go through this series and go, okay, you know, if I do that, do that, do that, then I'm okay with God. You're already okay with God. Jesus already did everything that was necessary for you to be right with God because it's God's desire, deepest desire, to be in eternal relationship with you. That's just who he is. He can't help himself. People say, you know, why did God create us? And I'm like, he couldn't help himself because he's relationship. That's his definition. 
So we love others in this way, God's way, because this is the way God first loved us. This is going to be our outline for this series. So let's look this week, this first week, God's way is first of all pure. When you think of pure, what comes to mind? You know, you think of pure gold. You know, it's perfect. It's without blemish or fault. That's God's way. It's first of all pure. Why, do we, why does it say first of all pure? And remember, it had that semicolon at the end. It really sets itself apart at the beginning. Why is it first of all pure? Why is God's way, God's way of being in relationships, first of all pure? In the Bible, the word pure or purity is often used is really living by God's values, living by God's commands. Another way of saying that is integrity. That's a word that maybe we're more familiar with. A lot of businesses have as one of their core values, integrity. Integrity is living a life of steady goodness. This is the foundation for the kind of relationships we want most. That's why, first of all, pure. This is the foundation to have, to experience those relationships that we want most. Because all relationships are built on trust. Every relationship is built on trust. Because when you're in a relationship with someone, it could be a friend, a parent, a child, a spouse, you know that most of the time you're not with that person, are you? When Katie and I get up in the morning, she goes to her work, I go to my work, we go through our days, we don't see each other. If you have a friend, maybe you see a friend a couple times a week, maybe on the weekends, but you don't spend most of your time probably with that friend. In order to be in a relationship with someone, you have to have trust because you're not with them most of the time to see what they're up to. What they're saying. What they're saying about you. How they're behaving. You know, for a husband and wife, this is critical. I'm not watching Katie the whole time. She's not watching me. There has to be trust that we are going to behave in a way that honors the commitment of our relationship. That's true for friends and children and parents, right? I mean, parents. Has your child at some times behaved in a way that you're like, oh, can I trust him or her? I mean, when I was a kid, my parents said, I don't know if I can trust you. I mean, that was like, that was a dagger in the heart. Right? All relationships are based on trust, and trust is built on integrity. Integrity is living a life of steady goodness. I bet you already know what this means living a life of steady goodness in relationships. You don't need to have a preacher tell you this. So here's here's your part now. When you think of what it means to live a life of steady goodness in relationships, What does that mean? What does that look like? What are the behaviors that typify that? So I need need some answers here. You've been thinking about it for a few minutes. What does it mean? Justice, righteousness. Yep. Yep. You got a preacher over there. <laughs> what else? It could be. It could be a simple one-word answer. This. <laughs> what? What is? What typifies a, a life of steady goodness in relationship? Let's come. Go ahead. Okay. Having that relationship with the Lord. What else? Love. What else? Kindness. Kindness. 
showing up. Honesty. How important is honesty? See, you guys know this, right? Following through on your commitments. N not being manipulative. Not giving the silent treatment because it never works and it just hurts. Not withdrawing, but engaging. Not turning to sarcasm. I mean, all those things, you already know those. That's the life of steady goodness integrity that builds trust in relationship. That's God's way of being pure. That's the way God is. So let's get down to the next step. Well, let me say this. This is the takeaway for today. To get what you want most, most, not what you think you want, but what you want most, most deeply in relationships. Understand and live God's way of steady goodness. You know what that is. You just did it. Live that way. So let's get to the next step today. I want you to think about all your relationships. Okay? Now I want you to think of any of those relationships that make you crazy. Sometimes. Now, Maybe the person that makes you crazy is sitting right next to you today or down the row or maybe they're up front here preaching. <laughs> okay? Don't raise your hand, Katie. Okay, or, or Greg. Okay, stop. <laughs> or my sister. Um, they're not here. May not be here. Maybe they are. Understand the word today is for you and for me. Maybe it's for the person here, but if you're thinking of someone who's not here, if you're saying, boy, they need to hear this, you're missing the point today. Because here's the thing. I'm going to ask you to think about those relationships throughout this series that make you crazy in particular ways. Each, each way could be different. But the, why we're doing that is I want you to think about, yeah, that behavior, that person, or what they say makes me crazy. But then to use that to reflect on your own behavior, my own behavior, our own words, my own words, so that we can change because when we think about how it makes us crazy. So going back to that relationship. When you think of a relationship that makes you crazy, why does it make you crazy? There are probably a lot of reasons, right? As many relationships that make you crazy, as many reasons, and there might be multiple reasons even within one relationship that make you crazy. But let's think about this. Is there a relationship, or maybe more than one, that makes you crazy because the person doesn't act with steady goodness in your relationship? They cheat. They lie. They manipulate. They don't follow through on their commitments. That makes you crazy. Can you think of someone like that in your life? Maybe in a big way, maybe even just a small way. When you think about how that makes you crazy, now begin to reflect on your own behavior in the same way. All relationships are built on trust, and trust is built on integrity, and integrity is built on a life of steady goodness. So the next step is this for today. Determine, honestly determine, where in your relationships, everyone's still standing? Yeah. Where in your relationships you are not acting with steady goodness? Where you might be cheating or deceiving or lying or not following through in commitments. Now, you can go on doing that because you think that'll get what you want. Go ahead. You know, these Dr. Phil's, how's that working out for you? Right? You may think that's going to get what you want, but it's not going to get you what you want most. So if that's where you're at, here's the simple next step. Stop it. Stop doing that. Stop saying that. Begin to act in that relationship with a life of steady goodness, honesty, and honoring commitments. And when you fail, 
Be up front with that. Say, hey, you know, I failed at that and seek forgiveness. To get what you want most in relationship, understand and live God's way of steady goodness. Let's pray. Father God, you create us to be in relationship. You yourself reflect that because you are relationship. We're thankful that you created us to be in community, to be in relationship. We're thankful that you didn't set us out here by ourselves in some universe because our relationships mean the world to us. It's important to us to be with people who love us best of all. But Lord, sometimes we just get confused. And we think that something we want is what we really want, but it's not what we want most. Help us today and in this series to understand what it means to live a life of steady goodness in our relationships so that we would experience what we want most. And most of all, Lord, we thank you that you love us unconditionally and forever. We pray in the name of our best friend, Jesus. Amen.